United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Welcome to United with Christ. I am your host, Pastor Michael Grady, pastor of the Prince of Peace Christian Fellowship here in the great city of El Paso. And we greet you today in Jesus' joy and in love. This is the day the Lord has made. I am honored and humbled to come to you today via the United with Christ. And our prayer line is 915-532-8518. 915-532-8518. If you would like to have us to pray with you, to touch and agree with you as God is, is speaking to your heart in this season, dial that number and someone will be honored and humbled to pray with you, to touch and agree that God would be glorified. We want to begin our, our, our time today uh, with a familiar scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Just going to read a few verses, but we want to really talk about today from the theme, the real in a me. And I'm spelling in a me, I N space, capital A space, capital M, and then the letter E, the real in a me. In 2 Corinthians chapter number four, it says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse number three says, but if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. I'm going to end at verse number five. And I want to talk about the real in a me. Today we stand on the pethivis of the challenges that are before us. The world is under judgment. The church is under a process called purging. And there's a, an opportunity for evangelism to break out all over the land today. We've been set apart. We've been chosen. We've been empowered that we might carry this glorious gospel. Amen. That the word of God might have preeminence and that the lives of those who hear will respond in faith and become part of the Christian community. What a privilege and what an honor it is. But there are tremendous challenges facing the body of Christ in this season as we struggle to make sense out of chaos, as we continue to maintain the kind of faith that obtains a good report, as we continue to look at ourselves and perceive ourselves as our Father does now through Jesus Christ, empowered by this precious Holy Spirit. What an honor it is to be called the redeemed of the Lord. What a privilege it is to be called more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the Apostle Paul in the second letter he writes to the Corinthians speaks about the necessity of recognizing that we have this service or this ministry that we have received mercy. What a privilege. Amen. God's mercy and God's grace endure forever. But he says we faint not. And I want to talk about the concept of fainting in this season. There are many in this season who are struggling to maintain their faith, I often have to remind us that we're under attack but never under siege. And therefore, God has given us his precious Holy Spirit that we might be courageous and competent and committed and consistent as we carry out the divine mandate to go ye therefore into all the world. Then he talks about renouncing the hidden things 
of dishonesty. And certainly in this season, there are challenges, amen, with people misidentifying the church with the religious community. The church, again, represents that city that sits up on a hill that was established on a confession of faith that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then I want to remind us today that as we talk about the real in of me, that the greatest struggle of Christianity is the person that are listening to us on this uh, 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 broadcast today, that person who is struggling between life and death, between spirit and flesh, trying to uh, continue to hold up the bloodstained banner for the Lord. It is a tremendous challenge. We pray often that men and women will come into the knowledge of the truth, but to remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, who as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. He says we have renounced the hidden things, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but yes, by the manifestation of the truth. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to be armor barriers of the truth, the truth that sets one free, the truth that liberates, the truth that transforms and the the truth that manifests the divine plan and purpose of God in the life of the church, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Yes, we are called to be watchmen on the wall. We're called today to be this living epistle to be read by all. And yet we struggle to hold in abeyance, the enemy that continues to come alive in season that he might discredit the viability and the credibility of those who claim to know Jesus Christ as Lord. Our gospel, though, the good news of the kingdom of God is available to whosoever will. And I want you to know today, if you're watching this broadcast, that if you've heard the word of God, that God is waiting on you to make a confession of faith. Remember today, our our prayer line is 915-532-8518. And it is the prayers of the righteous, he says, that availeth much. If our gospel is hidden, though, it is hidden to those whom are lost. I want to encourage someone today that you believe not the mandate of our adversary that says the word of God no longer has relevance and credibility in this season. That as you struggle with the challenges of who who we are and whose we are, that you examine yourself. The apostle Paul calls us to see whether or not we be in the faith. If this gospel is hidden, if this transformational good news of the love of God being shared abroad throughout humanity, if it's hidden, it is hidden to those who are lost. So again, if you are a man or a woman of faith, the gospel has already made its way into your heart. You made a confession of faith. Now faith, again, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by faith the elders obtained a good Good report that they please God. And more than anything else, as we challenge with the real enemy, we cannot begin to to examine the word of God in the context of its manifestation in our own lives. If the gospel is hidden, doesn't say when, but if it is, it is hidden to them who are lost. And then he says something very profound in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. I want you to know today there's a tremendous onslaught of the enemy who walks up and down in the earth seeking whom he may devour. And I must remind you that should not be you. <laughs> that should not be the ones who are watching and listening to this broadcast who are standing on the promises of God, who are walking in the perfect will of God, the complete manifestation of of his grace, but the gospel is hidden because there's an enemy in the land who has blinded the minds of them which believe not. And why do they believe not? They believe not. Most 
often because of the inconsistencies of what we say and what we do. Remember, faith again comes by hearing, but faith also produces manifestation that the word of God is truth and the truth is liberating and transformative to those who would hear it and respond in faith. Amen. The God of this world, though he uh, uh, directs his full attention to those who believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel. I want to encourage you today to always remember that if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. If you are in Christ, amen, even the devil in Hades cannot pluck you out of his hand because he holds us close. Yes, we're under attack. Yes, we're having trials and tribulation, but through those, our faith is perfected and our praise began to be manifested in a way that glorifies the Christ that is within us. That's why the apostle Paul says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the challenge again is not only to be hearers of the word as James declares, but to be doers also. In the doing of the word, we put the enemy under subjection. Yes, the real enemy is fear and doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah. But God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Yes, this gospel is hidden from those who do not believe. And I don't want you to become one of those enemies of the cross who continue to walk inconsistently with the presence and the power of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. The enemy does not want the word to become flesh. He does not want the manifestation to be consistent and viable and credible. And he uses the religious world, hallelujah, to pretend to be those who are illuminated by this tremendous gospel of Christ. Yes, we all sin and fall short, but that's not the end of our story. For if we confess our sins, he's just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember, our prayer line today is 532-915, of course, 8518. Again, back to our text. And then the great apostle Paul says the image of God resonates within us. And so the fear of the enemy is that our life will be a consistent representation of who we are and whose we are. And that men and women, boys and girls will be attracted to us. Yes, we have been given tremendous responsibility to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the earth. And that does not mean that we walk in human perfection or without error, but we walk by root being rooted and grounded in truth. And yes, the truth of the gospel, amen, must be be lived out in a way that exalts the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, it was he who said that if I be lifted up, amen, from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. I want to give someone a level of confidence today to know that you have something within you, the word of God, but it must come out of you as wells of water springing into everlasting life. You are in good company, amen. You are in good company because the spirit of the living God has been given to you that you might not embarrass God, but that you might glorify him with your life, with your witness, and with your testimony. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so again in verse, amen, number five, the apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 5, for we preach not ourselves. And one of the most tremendous stumbling blocks it is to the evangelistic move in the land is men and women who put themselves up before the Christ, who exalt themselves as the apostle Paul says who think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. Amen. We are simply ambassadors. Yes, that's a very important position in the king's business, but we must decrease and allow him to increase in us that men will see less of us and more of him. One of the most tremendous challenges that I have here in the city of El Paso and as I travel around the, the city and the state and the nation and even the world, amen, through the 
digital devices that have been blessed to be a part of our ministry, I find people have lost confidence because they have put themselves up as the example of the sovereignty of God. But God alone is sovereign. He is worthy to be praised. And yes, in him, in him we live, we move, and we have our very essence. But we must always remember not to preach ourselves, not to put ourselves up as this example of human perfection, because none of us are without error. All have fallen short of his divine expectation, but it is by the grace of God, amen, that the real enemy sometimes is myself when I feel that I'm not competent enough to be one who carries this great gospel. I want you to steal away into the closet and shut the door behind you and pray this prayer as David said, create in me a clean heart, renew within me, amen, the right spirit that I might be able to represent you in a way that brings glory and honor to your name. We preach not, we proclaim not ourselves, but Jesus Christ and ourselves, he says, your servants, amen, for Jesus' sake. One of the greatest things that we must recognize as we continue to draw closer and closer to the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ is that we must be able to give an account, amen, of the things that were placed in our hands and in our hearts as we represented the kingdom of the most high God. I'm convinced, my friends, that this is a great season that is upon us, amen, and that if we struggle, and it's okay to struggle with your confession of faith. It's okay to struggle with the legitimacy of how faith is manifested in the land, but do not be the one that causes one to stumble. Do not be the one because of our inconsistency, because of our inability to love one another, because of our inability to see one another as one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body of Christ. Amen. Moving throughout the land, gathering this great harvest of souls. The real enemy. It's me. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, not the preacher nor the teacher, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And what prayer does is repositions us now, amen, in the very presence of the, the throne of heaven as we make our declaration known unto him. I want to remind you that again, my God shall supply, hallelujah, and he has already supplied everything that we need out of his riches and glory through Christ Jesus the Lord, that everything that is of any spiritual significance, amen, shall be manifested through the body of Christ, amen, once again, exalting the name of the Lord, proclaiming deliverance and good news to those who are lost, amen. If this gospel is hid, hallelujah, it is hidden from those who are lost. The well need not a physician. Again, our prayer line, 915-532-532. 8518. The well need not a physician. Amen. We have been healed. We have been delivered. We have been set free. And I hope that you'll begin to enjoy the privileges of what it feels like. Amen. And what it looks like to be connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. We preach not ourselves. And I pray today that as we continue to manifest divine presence, that you will find yourself again rising up on a brand new day and inviting goodness and mercy to follow you, inviting the peace of God to surround you, inviting the power of God to resonate in you as men and women are looking for an answer in this season. And they ought to be searching you out, hallelujah, because you are connected to the divine. They ought to be looking for you because you've got something on the inside, moving on the outside, amen, creating an opportunity for them to change the narrative of what they cannot do. I believe today, my friends, that as we stand in awe of the glory of God, even in the midst of what's happening in the world today, that we would be confident that he is always with us and that he's always moving in us and that the body of Christ is alive and well on planet Earth. And that 
which is not alive and well has simply been misdiagnosed as the body of Christ. The church of the living God is that city that sits upon a hill that resonates and that moves throughout communities, affecting lives, affecting change and offering this balm of Gilead good for the healing of the soul. It is imperative. God has commended the light to shine in darkness. <laughs> Amen. I grew up in an era and in a time when they used to sing the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine everywhere I go, all through my home, all throughout my community. I'm going to let it shine. And notice you don't have to make it shine. It shines simply because the gospel, the living word of God is ever present in the life of those who are connected to the Christ of God. And yes, even in this second letter, Paul reminds those who are going to carry this great treasure that we have this treasure in earthen vessels in jars of clay so that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. God wants to keep us in the place where it's all about him, that it's all about exalting his name, but it's all about uh, offering men and women an opportunity to come out of darkness into this marvelous light. I marvel, amen. Yes, we're troubled on every side, <laughs> hallelujah. Yes, we are not yet, yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. Always bearing about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we are transitioning. Amen. God is preparing for his son to return. Amen. He's coming back for a church, a community of faith, a body of Christ. Amen. Without spot and without blemish. And that's not human spot. That's not human blemish, but that is spiritually without spot and without blemish. We've already been called the redeemed of the Lord and let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In the meantime, as we continue to deal with the reality of our faith, it requires us to stay connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. He gave us this power that we might be witnesses in Judea, Samaria, Galilee, yes, even to the utmost parts of the world. Do not let our witness be hid. Do not light a candle and put it under a bush, but hold it high that those who are looking for the light may seek you out and that you might redirect them to he who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his divine presence. I am Pastor Michael Grady, and I adjure you today to take this message to heart that the real in a me, hallelujah, is inside of me. And as we struggle, as we try to make sense of the plan and the purpose by which God has redeemed us and written our name in the Lamb's book of life, that we would remain steadfast and unmovable and growing and perfecting our faith. Amen. And it's not just for us, but it's for those who are seeking, those who are knocking and those who are asking. Yes, praise be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, continue to study to show thyself unto approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes, the Lord has prepared us a prepared people for a prepared place. And as we continue to walk by faith and not by sight, amen, I hope that you will come into the presence of the Lord. Those of you who are listening today, if you have not received Jesus Christ as Lord, I'm going to pray with you now that the word of God might find its way into your heart and that you might make a confession of faith. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So, Father, we pray that at those who are listening and those who are watching today, Lord, those who do not yet know you, because the gospel is hidden from those who are lost, that the Holy Spirit will break through the hardness of the hearts of men and women, that they may again yield themselves and declare, what must I do to be saved? And we offer Christ, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. We offer Christ a 
amen, the balm of Gilead, good for the healing of the soul. We offer Christ, amen, he who now sits at the right hand of power interceding on our behalf. And we pray that, Father, that they will declare yes to your will and yes to your word and that they will allow the transformational word of God to find a place in them and to rest in them that they too may become members of the body of Christ. My friends, what a privilege again to be able to come to you today in the midst of so many challenges that are before us. And when I say us, I mean the body of Christ. Amen. If this gospel is hidden, it is hidden from them who are lost. But thanks be unto God that the real enemy, sometimes it's, it's me, and I pray that the me that is in you will be resurrected on today to begin to walk again by faith and not by sight. Again, it is the prayers of the righteous. And as we pray together, as the Apostle Paul was trying to encourage, amen, we are always on our way to transition from one spiritual plateau to the next. But God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted, try to test it above that which you are able to bear, but will use whatever you're going through to show you a way of escape. There is a way, hallelujah, a way of escape. Jesus himself declared, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. So today, my friends, again, Prince of Peace Christian Fellowship, 9915 Montwood Drive, El Paso 799. Uh, two five, amen, is where we celebrate our faith on the Sundays. And we pray that if you're in the city that you will come by and that you will join us in worship. Amen. Prince of Peace Christian Fellowship where worship is gathered and where faith and works collide. Again, thank you so much. I'm going to begin to close out with a prayer for uh, all of those who are suffering through these tremendous challenges in the land. And we pray that you will touch and agree with us. Father, have your way with us now. Again, in Jesus' name, amen. Make sure to mark your calendars for our upcoming spring telethon from March 23rd through March 27th. For more information, you can visit our Life Christian TV social media pages. Go to lifechristiantv.com. Be part of this spring's theme by sharing your testimony on how God has impacted your life. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you.